the day or the first part of the show, which was what a lot of contemporary sports talk radio was talking about. Uh, the uh, New York Yankees no longer playing Kate Smith's God Bless America. It's an old 1939 rendition and all that because... And there wasn't any media coverage of this, keep in mind. I mean, like I said, it's one thing to maybe say, well, we've got to get rid of uh, the Confederate flag at NASCAR events because just, you know, there's just too much media backlash against it. You know, there's just too much of it. We've got to do it. We won't get corporate sponsorship if we want. Okay, that's an argument. But there was nobody out there in the media suggesting that Kate Smith was offensive, and certainly God Bless America is not a racist song. And somebody had found out and contacted the Yankees that, you know, the, well, there are these songs that by today's standards uh, that she sang years ago might not be appropriate. Um, do Are, are we ever going to see the end of this? <laughs> I guess I know that that's, you know, I, I'm telling you the first time about this story here, Josh, but I, it just, yeah. to, see, this is the thing. When there wasn't a movement against this, evidently this was privately brought to the Yankees. I wonder about the amount of fans that you're going to turn off. I mean, it is really similar to, let's say, Kaepernick kneeling for the anthem. When you said, oh, we can't play God Bless America by Kate Smith, which since 1939 has been pretty much a staple of patriotism. You know, now that's got to, I, I don't know. Do you have any thoughts to share here? Because I think it's actually going to wind up being a bad business move to the team that charged $50 to sit in the bleacher seats on opening day. Yeah, are they, are they taking out the whole song or just her rendition? They are playing it with an organist, which also, because the lyrics are gone, then makes me wonder, okay, it's God bless America. And I guess, you know, hey, look, you can go and sing the national anthem if you want to when they play it. Many do. Right. But, uh, you know, how many people are really going to do that? And also then yeah. you are taking out the patriotism of the song, let alone, yeah, God, the religious aspect of the song. Right, yeah. Well, I, this is the first I've heard about it, so I can't speak too intelligently yeah. about it. Well, <laughs> <laughs> like you, you could you could say a, you could say anything and, and it's, it's misconstrued as racism. So I don't, I don't know. Uh, I got called racist last year for not liking Julio Tehran. <laughs> so um, so I, I don't know. It's a it's a weird world, world to live in for sure. Uh, in regards to I, so it's been played since 1939. It has been played at the uh, Yankees game since 2001. Yeah. The song was recorded in 1939. It was, yes, I mean, it was one of the songs of patriotism. You know, much like Whitney Houston and the Star Spangled Banner, say, 30 years ago. I'm sure, you know, she sang that at Super Bowl 25, and that became uh, a big thing. You know, that sort of thing. In 1939, yes, I mean, this recording, yeah. That, that was big. The Philadelphia Flyers would actually ask her to come in uh, during their Broad Street Bullies days and sing the song in lieu of the national anthem. And everybody thought it was gotcha. great. And they put, built a statue of Kate Smith outside the spectrum because of it. Mm. Now that's all bad. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, you wonder this. I, I can remember the Ty Cobb statue outside of Fulton County Stadium. And I, I'm sorry, I haven't been to SunTrust Park yet. Is the Ty Cobb statue still there? Uh, not that I know of. I, I, I have not seen one. And uh, Ty Cobb, yeah. uh, uh, last year, um, what's his name? I'm looking it up right now. Uh there was a there was a book written that really suggests yeah, that yeah. Al Stump had a bone to pick and he did some yeah, yellow yeah, journalism. Yeah. yeah. So by Charles Learson. Uh, a guy named Charles Learson wrote about two years ago, Ty Cobb, A Terrible Beauty, and finally corrected the record of, of, of Ty Cobb. And uh, Ty Cobb is, man, what a, you feel bad because for you, what happened was back in the 60s, a guy basically uh, painted a... a a false picture of Ty yeah. Cobb as this racist guy. It was Al Stump, yeah. Of, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, my co-host, 
Coach Ken Hendricks is actually from Royston, Georgia, so he's, he's kind of passionate about this. He's, I've visited Ty Cobb's grave in Royston, Georgia, okay? I, I, okay, I know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so in, anyways, um, it's sad. Most, most, people, most people just think of Ty Cobb as this racist guy he wasn't. But at least there's no evidence that he was. Yeah. At all. Yeah, I know. And we start wondering then about some of the things that was in Ken Burns' baseball. And now I know even that has been gone over with a fine tooth comb. And I mean, there is some sob sistering in, in that old documentary. You know, during the Depression, some people unwilling to give up baseball made the nickel hot dog their only meal of the day. You know, that's that's pulling at heartstrings right there. I mean, you know, show me the evidence of this. I mean, really, you know, that sort of thing. Hey, let's get back to what's going on in the diamond here. Okay, there's some talk. Uh, I know there's some talk down in the farm about Austin Riley and uh, the idea that, uh, well, he's got to play a second year in uh, AAA. Maybe the Braves uh, should have had him in the lineup and not Josh Donaldson. What are your thoughts? You know, okay. Yeah. Hey, it's early. It's, I know I keep saying that. And I probably sound like a homer, but it's, it's April nineteenth. I think I think Donaldson's gonna be fine, and I think uh, I like Austin Riley, but he was he's not ready yet, in my opinion. He's not ready yet, and uh, I mean he's hitting two hundred seven right now in Triple A. Small sample size, but you know, in fourteen games, two hundred seven. And I keep thinking Austin Riley's gonna be like a trade piece. Uh, I re I really think that just because. You got Camargo, you got Donaldson. I don't, I don't know if the Braves need. I think Austin Riley is a little overhyped. Let me just come out and say it. I do. <laughs> I could be wrong, but that's what I think about. It. There is some talk. I mean, uh, about and I, he's a third baseman, but uh, Ender Enciarte. Can the Braves? They're ninety nine right now, and they are defending uh, division champ. You know, it's only two games back of the Fightin' Phils, who at eleven and seven. I guess we were thinking uh, a little bit of you know. Well, are, were, was Bryce Harper really going to help him out? Was you know? But uh, they're in first place right now. We'll see how long it lasts. This sort of thing. Anyway, uh, the question is, can Ender Enciarte, the best defensive player on the Braves, but can they carry his bat? That's the question. What are your thoughts? This also has come out in the early part of yeah. the year. I, I think I think if there's any bone I have to pick with Snicker, and I, and I, I love Brian Snicker. I'm a huge Snicker fan, but I think for the long term, if you're going to have a Snicker put Ender at the leadoff spot just because Ender was fast. And I like Ender. I, I, I really do. Ender starts off slow every year, by the way. He, he just does. It's his thing. Ender, I think, operates better uh, down the lineup at, like, the eighth spot. I, I mm -hmm. think he does. I don't think he's a – I like Ender. I think uh, a lot of the hate about him on Twitter uh, amongst Braves fans is a little bit silly. Um, he's a slap hitter. He's a singles hitter. He gets on base, and when he gets on base, he's, he's a great base runner. But he seems to perform better when he's not at the top of the lineup, in my opinion. I think he's going to be fine. I, I really, I really think that. I do. You just have to. I think right now there's a lot of analytical, quote unquote, experts who uh, they look at Hinder and they're like, "Oh, he's only got like a 93 career WRC plus. That's bad." And these are the kind of guys who uh, they don't appreciate Tony Gwynn. They don't appreciate, like, Pete Rose. They, mm -hmm. you know, if you don't hit for power, then, you, then you're not good. Ichiro, yeah. And, yeah, Ichiro, right, exactly. Uh, and so it, I think it's funny because the guys that get paid to make decisions, like Anthopolis and his right-hand man, Mike Fast, love guys like Andrew and Chiarte. So, uh, yeah, hitting for average is just not hot right now, but it should be. Basically, Terry Pendleton won an MVP for the Atlanta Braves in their glory days by hitting for average. I know he hit 19 home runs or so, but yeah, yeah really, you know, the, which isn't a bad total of the day, but still, you know. All right, I got two minutes left, so I want to ask you, what so far, early part of the season, we're about a month in, a little shy of that, what's the biggest surprise to you? The Rays, the Pirates, or somebody else? Whoa, probably the Pirates. Yeah, yeah. 
they're using money ball tactics. I mean, you know, I, 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 I'm like, who plays for this team again? What, you know, Ivan Nova's with the White Sox, really? You know, and, uh, but, and it's, it shows this because I'm, I remember a lot of friends from up in Pittsburgh, actually, Josh Brown, knock home a nation right. telling me, you know, oh, they, they get criticized all the time, but they made the right moves. The McCutcheon deal worked out and all this. And the problem is you're rooting for numbers. You're not rooting for men. And I can't argue with the deal, you know, but you're rooting for numbers. And I guess that's one of the nice things about the yeah. Braves signing, you know, uh, Acuna and such to their long deal, uh, long-term deals. Yeah, I mean, you're now rooting for men. You're now watching, the, you know, you know who will be out there. And it's not necessarily, hmm, let me digest Moneyball, this novel right here, and see how it works and all that stuff. But, but yes, you're right. The Pirates right now with the best record of the National League. Braves are nine and nine. Too early to start to paint it. Only two games back. Come on, eleven and seven with the whack job manager. How long is that going to last? Right? You know. Well, they did make some good decisions yeah. uh, afterwards and all that. But you got the Braves lineup still good. We'll see what goes on. Still a very likable team. And as you mentioned, uh, maybe not the trade for Kimbrel. Maybe the talent is right there on the farm because it's pretty deep down there. Tri City Sports Now, Colin Coward is next. We've been listening to Josh Brown knock on a nation. All right.